the romans had a great many heroes whom they looked up to and admired but who exactly is a hero in this video i am considering a figure of the past who is great or virtuous in some way as a rough definition generally from the early republic period and before then when there are almost no written records from rome as a time frame i will leave later figures such as caesar and pompey for another day first of all there are two heroes that should be talked about first the founders of rome Aeneas and Romulus. Aeneas was a survivor of the famous Troy who, after a long and perilous journey and a whole lot of fighting, founded a city and a dynasty that would lead to the second origin story, that of Romulus and Doremus. The modern and commonly used story. Grand uncle Amulius overthrew grandfather Numitor, forced Amulius' daughter Rhea Silvia to be a virgin to, to fear that her children would overthrow him. She still got pregnant due to god Mars. Romulus and Remus born, babies put in baskets and thrown in the river, rescued by wolf, then by shepherd, grew up, overthrew Amulius, replaced him with Numitor, went to found a city, argued where it would be, Romulus won, Remus mocked Romulus, Romulus killed him, lived a life, and was turned into a god. Got it? Great. The other type of hero that I am considering is those of later dates in the monarchical and early republic, whom I am calling the war heroes. There are many, but to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, here are a few examples. Populus Horatius Cocles. He stood alone on a bridge and defended against an invading army while his companions cut down the bridge, showing that the enemy could not cross. Lucius Quinctius Cincinnatus, a famed consul who, while in retirement as a farmer, was pressured by the people to become dictator, temporary absolute leader in times of crisis, and, when the crisis was dealt with, returned to his life as a farmer, giving up the power immediately. Gaius Mucius Scaevola, a soldier who tried to assassinate the enemy Etruscan leader Lars Porcina, was captured and sentenced to be burned alive. He then put his right hand in the fire and burned it off, intimidating the Etruscans to release him and gaining himself the nickname Scaevola, meaning lefty. Marcus Atilius Regulus, a soldier captured by Carthage during the First Punic War, he swore that if he could return to Rome, he would persuade the Romans to make peace. If he did not do so, he promised to return to Carthage. He went to Rome, but instead of saying they should stop, he encouraged them to continue fighting. Keeping his word, he returned to the Carthaginians, who executed him. Okay, you get the picture. These were great and noble men who did great and noble deeds. Now away from all this history to the other part of this. History. There are four points I would like to make. First things first. All these guys did their thing before history was actually written down, so it was passed down in oral form until the Romans eventually began to say, Hey, why don't we write down our history? This alone would have led to some things being lost or others being added to these stories. That means some facts have to be questioned. Secondly, some parts of their history eerily mimic parts of history written down by the Greeks, to the extent that it's probably not coincidence. For instance, Horatius on the bridge mirrors the same of the 300 Spartans at Hermopoli. The number 300 is the same number that Scaevola says are the number of Romans prepared to kill Porcina and so on. Roman writers very likely took parts of Greek history and incorporated them into their own history, making it Roman. Third, the Romans had an ideal model of what it was like to be a Roman, and a lot of the values for the perfect Roman were traditional values. Traditional is the key word. They believed that these values came from the past, and as such, it is likely that they would want to exemplify these values in their predecessors. The Romans needed to have a great and glorious past with great men in it. They really did believe that things were better in the old days. Thus, they would have made sure to acclaim their ancestors. Finally, the writers themselves might not agree what exactly happened, and they may even have written down a history that suited their own viewpoints. One historian called Ignatius refused to believe that Romulus killed Remus, instead saying that Remus outlived his brother. The poet Horace, however, writing in the turbulent later Republic, accepted the brother killed brother story as a way to explain that infighting was bred into Rome. Plus, the Roman writers weren't stupid. Even they questioned some parts of the stories, such as the wolf in the story of Romulus. This all resulted in histories being different in some cases. So, considering all of this, what does it mean for the heroes? Well, it leads to the conclusion that these heroes might have been made up or exaggerated. What they did is extraordinary, and as such, people remember them and write them down. And sometimes, just as with Cincinnati, you've got so many stories that they start to seem more real than those who have just one claim to fame, one distinguishing mark. However, there's a great amount of doubt about these heroes. Most modern historians believe that Romulus, who was supposed to give in the city the name, didn't exist. Instead, the Romans created someone who would be the archetypal Mr. Rome. Remember that dynasty that led from Aeneas to Romulus? 
it too was made up. The war heroes were likely polished to be the shining examples of our vanitas to the Roman reader. These great and mighty Roman heroes may be figments of the imagination, ghosts in more than one sense of the word.